Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode here of Essential Marketing. My name is David White, and today we're going to continue our three-part series of why we love marketing with some actual practical in-market examples that we had also shared with the students over there at Pierce College. Enjoy. All right, we can continue. Um, so now we're going to share a few examples of what marketing looks like in um, in praxis. And so we're going to start with an SEO ex uh, example. And so we are going to take a look at uh, one of our customers, uh, Jay, who's an arborist. Um, and and so Jay approaches, hey, you know, I'm. I'm not getting a whole lot of business. Most of my business is word of mouth referral. How can I drum up more business, right? The very first thing that we always are looking at as marketers is where can we find motivated people, right? And so an easy way of finding motivated people are people that are searching on Google for what you have to offer, right? And so we can go to the next slide. And so this is one of my all-time favorite tools, and it is something that every one of you should be taking a look at. It doesn't matter if you're, in, if you're looking for a career in, mar in marketing or something else, because um, what this tool allows us to do, and by the way, it's Keyword Planner by Google, it allows us to see how many people are searching for a keyword on Google. And so that kind of knowledge, and also it allows us to segment that then by the area. So I can see how many people are searching for jiu-jitsu training in Puyallup. How many people are searching for martial arts training in Puyallup, right? And so imagine what kind of power and knowledge that gives me for all my advertising and my marketing of knowing that, oh my gosh, like there's only 10 people that search for jiu-jitsu, but there's 100 people, I'm just making something up right now, right? But there's 100 people that are searching for martial arts, right? It's like, well, can I kind of modify sort of my branding and my image to fit under that umbrella, you know, without sort of you know, selling out on what it is I have to offer, right? And so um, similar is how we approached it for Jay. So Jay, he sees himself as an ISA certified arborist. He worked his butt off to get the certification. That's part of his value proposition. I'm not just a tree service guy, I'm an arborist, right? Problem with that, we can go on the next slide, is that for arborists, and this is across the United States, it has uh, 49,500 searches across the United States, tree service, 74,000, right? Tree removal, 60,500, is that when you boil that down even to Jay's service area of Tacoma, Pierce County, him being solely focused on arborist is not helping, right? It's you know, he's leaving all of this other money on the table and conversions and sales and customers on the table, you know, by not saying, hey, I'm a tree service guy. Oh, I'm a tree service guy that has arborist certification, right? And, um, and so this is sort of like the very first step that we take whenever we're doing any kind of marketing is that, and we're going to take a look at another example of marketing here for demand generation, but there's no quicker way of being able to get leads than in, or customers um, uh, than being able to get in front of a person. They're literally going to Google and they're searching what you have to, have to offer, right? And um, so it's the very first step for us. Can you go to the next slide? Um, it's, um, actually, just to kind of wrap up uh, for Keyword Planner, um, and um, I think you even kind of mentioned that you're interested in marketing, but also kind of business, you know, and you know, if there might be, if you're thinking about sort of entrepreneurship, your own company, maybe other people, Keyword Planner can be a great tool, right? Um, especially for anybody who's also thinking about a product, you have an idea, you're thinking about starting your own company, is take, using this, this tool to kind of get a sense of what is it that people are searching for? And um, there's even more data that you can get out of it, such as, what is the cost to run an ad? What is the cost to get a click and that type of thing? So irrespective, if you're um, interested in a career in marketing or not, it's a very, very helpful tool. Um, so now we're going to take a look at a completely different type of case study um, in marketing. And this is now creating 
our own uh, demand, okay? So for the arborist, we already saw there's you know, over 70,000 people they are searching for tree service every single month, right? For, a, for an organization like World Vision, well, one of the main things that they have to offer is referred to as child sponsorship. The idea is that you as a donor um, pay $39 a month and you're able to provide health, water, education, and a uh, safe spot for the, for the kiddo to live um, all the way through school and you're doing something great. I love the organization, we sponsor five kids. They do phenomenal work. The problem for them is there's not a lot of people that wake up in the morning that type into Google sponsor child, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do I sponsor, how do I donate? <laughs> so, so we have to take a different approach to marketing and creating the demand for it, right? It could be similar also for jujitsu. You know, if we're take, you know, there's there's two aspects. You know, the low hanging fruit are people that might be searching for martial arts jujitsu. There's always going to be a market of making it attractive to people that they have a problem they want to solve. I want to lose weight. I want to become more agile. You know, whatever that is, right? Then you could create sort of a story, you know, that would offer jujitsu or martial arts as the solution, right? right. And so. In World Vision's case, it's all about education, right? And getting in front of an audience who we know has the potential of then um, becoming a sponsor. So I'm gonna walk you through what this looks like. So, uh, you can go to the, the first slide here. So, so the, the, the very first step, we know that, you know, there's not a lot of people that are waking up, they're saying, I wanna sponsor a child, but we also know that um, looking at sort of the donor database that um, it's primarily female, it's primarily, you know, between 25 and 50 years of age, right? And um, and so um, and we're and so our goal is to get content in front of them, educating people, raising awareness about the work that World Vision is doing in the field in these third world countries, right? So we would start typically with a video, and then um, and so uh, this is very technical. Um, and, I'm, and we have more content that I can share if anybody is interested in it of how this works more specifically. But, um, but what is a growing trend and very, very helpful these days in terms of targeting is rather than saying, I want to get my content in front of the 25 to 50 year old female person is to say, I want to get in front of people that show similar browsing behavior as my own customers. Um, also referred to as artificial intelligence, really, um, when it comes down to it. Because what happens is we can upload our own customer database into platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Google. And we can say, these are my customers. Now find me other people that have similar traits. So imagine the, the, you know, the, the more specificity that I'm getting when Google is able to not only or Facebook is not only able to get the content in front of the female 25 year old up to 50 years of age, but rather, oh, these people, they seem to be going to this blog or they seem to be going to this forum or they're purchasing these types of things, right? All this data can be used now to my advantage as a marketer because I can say, I want to get in, people, in front of people that are similar to my own customers. Um, so Facebook refers to it as lookalike audience. Google refers to it as, as similar audiences. And it's a very, very powerful tool Again, going back to the conversion formula, that all has to do with motivation, yep. right? The very first step is, is I, if I want to get as many uh, conversions out of the 100 people that I'm paying to get in front of, then I want to make sure that those 100 people are somewhat qualified, right? And um, so we start with a video. The, the nice thing about a video is, and especially in social media is, uh, it's inter uh, uh, advertising on social media is really interrupting, you know, what people are doing. They're kind of scrolling through, they're seeing what their family, their friends are doing and that kind of thing. So if I can find people from those hundred people that I get in front of that are just going to watch it for 10 seconds, that's already a win, right? Because if they watch it for 10 seconds, those are the people that are going to continue to serve ads up to until the point of conversion, right? So once again, I'm able to then really make sure that I'm, that I'm focusing my advertising dollars from those 100 people. Let's say there's 20, 25 people that actually watch the video for, for 10 seconds, and I'm just focusing on those individuals for all the other advertising. Um, so we can move on to the next one. So, 
Now we have, and of course these are big numbers when we're running this kind of this this kind of campaign. I'm just, you know, using it as an example. So let's say we have the 25 from 100 people that have watched the video for 10 seconds. Well, then we're going to have more advertising that is more conversion focused. In this case, the conversion for us is. I'm not expecting this person to, to now swipe a credit card for $39. They just learned about us. All I know is that they were interested enough in what we have to offer that they watched a the video for more than 10 seconds, right? So I'm introducing to them the idea of how, how about, would you be interested in changing a child's life? I'm not even talking much about sort of like the price and that type of thing. And I'm just capturing their information so that I can um, improve the conversions at a later point in time, which we'll take a look at here. So for this particular campaign, a conversion is simply getting them to fill out the, na the name, phone number, email. That's a conversion. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Yep. And so, and that's, uh, that is very typical uh, with demand generation with this example in comparison to the Arborist example, right? If I have people that are going to Google, they're searching for tree service or whatever it is, those are those are people that are usually willing to buy right now. Yeah, they have a problem that they need solved. Right exactly, yeah. right? And, uh, and so in this case, well, they're not searching for sponsored child, they're learning about it, so usually it's gonna take several steps. We did some um, research, and um, in many cases we saw that it was up to 20 interactions wow. <laughs> before an individual wow. then became a sponsor, right? Yeah. Um, Nevertheless, we also know that uh, a sponsor would typically um, be loyal to the organization, to the kid that they were sponsoring for over three years, wow. right? Yeah. So we always have to kind of take a, take a look at sort of what are the po possible returns and how much time and effort could I, you know, therefore be spending yeah. on it, right? That's great information. So can take a look at the next slide. And so, and then the final step I think this kind of feeds in with your question earlier about like what's the right way of converting, right? Well, we have now all these people that had signed up, right, and said, yes, I'm interested in learning more. So we're going to do whatever it takes to try to convert them, right? Some of them, you know, we just sent them a link and an email, learn more about this. They go to a landing page. They see a, a child, you know, in, their, in a country that they want to support. They can sponsor right there. Boom, they're done, right? And then there's others that they don't even take the time to click on the link, right? But those are, that's all data that we have. And so the people that never even took the time to even click on the link, we work with a call center and we try to give them a call and we explain to them the idea of child sponsorship over the phone. And in some cases, the call center would send them a link then to an individual ch child's profile and here's Cherry, she's in Ghana, right? And, and so, um, I think the, the, the main idea and my encouragement for anybody that's working in the field of marketing is, especially when you have a, sort of a lead database, you wanna be exploring every possible avenue of improving your conversion because um, you've already worked so hard to get the contact, right? So now you really wanna make sure that you explore every avenue and being able to convert them, right? Um, so then, one thing that, um, that often is forgotten, I think, for businesses in terms of marketing is it does not stop with the conversion. It doesn't stop with the sale, right? Um, but it, but um, there's huge potential, what we refer to as the engagement phase. And that is your customers, they've already purchased, in this case, we have individuals who are an existing sponsor from World Vision, right? And so, if we're thinking about, well, how can we get more sponsors? Well, we have the de demand generation side, right? That we're getting in front of brand new people, they know no nothing about us, we're serving up a video, all that. And then, but we also have all these other people that they already know about us. What are things that we can do to kind of get them involved to help spread the word, right? And so in this case, it was a simple text message that went out to all their sponsors saying, hey, we're trying to get 100 more sponsors. You are a loyal, and faithful donor that is able to achieve so much together with us, would you share this information out on your social media to raise more awareness about the work that's being done 
in the community where your child lives, right? And, um, and so this is a very specific example, of course, to World Vision, but we oftentimes see that it's, a, it's something that's often forgotten, right? Uh, for businesses of thinking about like, how can you even use your existing customers um, to uh, be part of marketing campaigns. Hey, I know that uh, there was a lot of information that we kind of packed into those examples. So if you have any other questions or would like to go deeper, or maybe you have a completely different question about the business that you're working for, that you own, we would love to hear from you guys. Feel free to reach out. We'd be more than happy to sit down with you guys and talk about your specific questions. And if this information was helpful to you guys, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to see you in the future. Take care and bye.